upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this, nothing more. How distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor, treating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor, treating entrance at my chamber door, this it is. Presently, my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then no longer, sir, I said, I will, madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is, I was napping. And so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, but I scarce was sure I heard you. Here, I opened wide the door. Darkness there. Nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering. Long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before, but the silence was unbroken. The stillness gave no token. The only word they spoken was the whispered word, the Lord. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, the Lord. Nearly this, nothing more. When, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance, maybe, not a minute stopped or steady, but with mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat. Nothing more. Then, this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stood decorum of the countenance of war. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Much I marvel at this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird upon his chamber door, bird or beast, upon the sculpted bust, upon his chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting, lonely on the pallid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did out poor. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow, he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then, the bird said, Still was broken by the price of the spoke. Doubtless said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore. 
to the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling straight, I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking the fancy up to fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er she shall press on evermore. Then the thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe from the memories of Lenore Quaff, or Quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still a bird or devil, with a tempter sent, or with a tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me, truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, think evil, prophet, still a bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempests and the night's plutonian shore, leaving a black plume as a token of that lie thy soul had spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven. Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. On the pallet was the palace just above my chamber door. His eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. The lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul, that shadow, lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted.